An end of an era. Hasbro released its final line of original real American hero line in 1994. And with the type of designs and figures that crowd out at the end, good riddance. But almost without warning, in 1997, going under the name A Real American Hero Collection, Classic Joe and Cobra 3 packs, and more, appeared exclusively to Toys R Us. Using original molds, this left us with a sense of nostalgia. And we didn't even know what that meant at the time. In, in the, the year, year 2000, 2000. G.I. Joe returned to shelves in all major retailers, once again using original molds, but with entirely new deco and sometimes even new names. This G.I. Joe snowball just seemed to be gaining momentum, as in 2002, two packs were released, subnamed G.I. Joe vs. Cobra, once again using original molds from the original line. But as the line went along, they introduced new molds, of classic G.I. Joe characters, leaving us wondering where Hasbro Snowball was leading to. Lackluster spy troops, except for their six-pack army builders, followed by the giant yellow snowball that killed the toy line for the next two decades, Valor vs. Venom. Although the three packs were actually pretty cool, and I've got a few. But now, let's get to the vehicle and figures I'll be unboxing today. I'm going to be doing this in chronological order. So first off is the 2000s All Striker. Check out the graphics on this box. This is pure 80s, but this is the year 2000. So at one point, this was $9.99 exclusive to Toys R Us. And he comes with an exclusive Pathfinder figure. It's a four wheel suspension and take a look at the two Joes riding the All Striker. These are not animations. These are actual men, but I don't think those arms belong to those faces. I bet they're probably most likely Hasbro employees. Same graphics, same animation on both sides of this box. Now looking at the top and bottom, again, it's the same graphics, same animation. Now the interesting part comes in the back of the box. Here we've got all the stuff you need to know about the All Striker to pump you up to get it out, put on all those stickers, and take it out to the backyard. Seriously, all the detail that they're boasting on the back of the packaging doesn't even make it seem like it's a toy anymore. It's more like a model car now. They have grown up with their audience. The original 1985 All Striker came in a green, lighter color scheme with Crankcase as its exclusive action figure. But this All Striker, coming out post grunge, post the crow, straight into the emo era, came out in darker tones with Pathfinder all in black to match. The front and back of the box says that it carries up to four G.I. Joe figures. Although it might be a bit difficult, I'll try to find three other figures that match its aesthetic. All right. Let's get it open. The tape's already basically coming off. Look at that. Tape's all yellow. Take it to the side just for now. And just like the back said, it, that it contains body, chassis, roll cage, Canyon. I have to put all that stuff thing all together. There we go, that's it. And I'm left with all this. I thought this was gonna be quick, but whoa, look at this. William. His name is William. It's Pathfinder's file card. What else do you have here? Okay. I'll get you out once I finish the build. Since this build was gonna take me a while and I needed to take in my car to get service, I decided to take the All Striker with me to the mechanic. So as they worked on my car, I worked on this car. 1985, straight out the same mold as the 1985 original. I said it half jokingly earlier, but this was like building a model car. As difficult as it was building this All Striker, 
mostly because I wasn't wearing my glasses, I had a lot of fun doing it. What I wasn't looking forward to was adding all the stickers. It looked at me kind of funny, but it's finally done. And I gotta say, it looks great to build it myself. I also appreciate it a lot more since I had to build it myself. Now, let's check out Pathfinder's file card. The original file card. Primary military specialties. The name's the same. Birthplace is the same. Completely different, including that picture. Now let's get Pathfinder out of there. And I'm like, all right. So I could possibly just put them back in. The 20, his O-ring is nice and intact. The 22 years have not degraded it. And he feels great. Let's smell it. it smells all right. Batman v Superman, where it's, he didn't come with any weapons. But do you really need any weapons when he got a cool vehicle like the All Striker? His colors are pretty bland, dull. He just, he looks like a character from Batman v Superman, G.I. Joe team, with the Night Force. And this looks real cool. Just him by himself in the All Striker looks fantastic. I'm already getting all these ideas for like stop motion animation stuff that I can do. And yeah, all these stickers were pretty much a drag to apply, but it does make a difference. out let's get those two packs open since I'm doing this in chronological order and since I'm doing this in chronological order and they were both released in 2002 I had to look at the UPC and look at some of the serial numbers underneath and it looks like General Tomahawk and Headman came out first before I unbox it let's take a look at the packaging it's got a lot of graphics but they just seem to me pretty generic. I mean, the only cool parts is the Cobra symbol and the GI Joe symbol. The rest is pretty like, it could be anything else. Now the back of the packaging, all these, this type of animation, it just, it's very comic book animation and I'm really not into any of that stuff. I wish they would have been more realistic Especially since, well, the figures aren't that crazy looking with their 600 abs sticking out. Here we go. The file card. Oh, look at that. That's a nice background. You could barely see it, though, with these figures here. Cobra Mantis sub. I guess they're really trying to get you to like this whole comic book style animation of the G.I. Joe figures. I don't like it. And here's a bunch more. So let's collect them all. In a opposite to each other. Good look at them and compare them to your... I'll cut them out. Let you guys take a look at them and compare them to your original figures. This is more like it. There's nothing to build. Just a bunch of weapons I have to take out and the nice thing is they came with figure stands these guys feel pretty cool they feel like the original well they're molded from the original ones but there's something lacking I think it might be the color scheme looking at them from the side they look all right 
love. I do love. And you could see where the screws were supposed to go. But right there. And being that shipwreck is my favorite Joe, and being that shipwreck is my favorite Joe, I've been looking forward to this. Let's take a look at the box before I open it. Again, it's the same eh, generic graphics on the box, but this one says that there's comic number two inside. I don't have comic number one. The back is completely different from the previous one with actual pictures of figures and vehicles that you can purchase. Unleash the Furial Battle with Sound Attack. Look at that. Let's find that out. And here is... Oh, look at that. The little flyer advertising VHS tapes. $20. G.I. Joe the Movie. On DVD for $20. G.I. Joe the Movie. It, it is a comic, but it's more like an order form. This is pretty, oh, this is pretty cool. This is way better than the other one. Way, way better. Look at that, yeah. Then the comic. Oh. And, all right, oh. Just how similar they are to the original ones. And I know Hector X Delgado. They didn't change his name, but we'll see if they change the rest of his file. Again, nothing really to put together, which is nice. Weapons only work with certain, so these sound attack weapons only work with certain vehicles, I guess. And I'm not gonna get these, these look pretty crappy. Pretty interesting. Especially Shipwreck here at all. It's kind of funny. Well, the gun that came in his holster doesn't fit in there at all. As it looks like it's about to break right there. It's none of these guns fit. Maybe this gun fits a little better. No. No on it. And the bat looks pretty cool. I was going to compare the original file cards to these file cards, but I noticed that they're all different. And in some instances, it almost seems like they're different characters. Now the Cobra Bat, he is a different character. He's Cobra Bat Mark III. But I'll leave the file cards on the screen for a few seconds so that you can pause and read them if you wish. The pamphlet in which the comic is printed on, which is written by Larry Hama, also comes with this special offer to get a G.I. Joe, kind of named after you which reminded me a lot of the 80s offer of Steel Brigade. Thank you for joining me on this unboxing video. Make sure to come back for part two of the review of each figure plus the vehicle. G.I. Joe will return after these messages.